Okay guys, got the Ranger 900 in the shop today. Uh, gonna be doing a little upgrade on it and also a repair. First thing up is the upgrade. I got a USB charging point, actually it's a 3.0 charging point, so it does the fast charge, I guess, if your uh, device can do that. And it also has a voltmeter built into it, so Two good things to have on these Ranger 900s that I don't think any 900 came um, with a USB charging port. So this is a good thing to have because a lot of things use uh, that USB port now. I'll show you uh, what I've got. Okay guys, so in the Ranger 900s you have two uh, 12 volt charging ports here. They just take the standard cigarette lighter uh, charger that can be plugged into them. Uh, they come with two of these so I left this one alone and I got this off Amazon. This is a it's actually a, a USB uh, charger. Uh, they're calling it a fast charger. I guess it's got a, a 3.0 uh, fast charging port on it so it can charge things faster. And then when you're not using that it is a voltmeter. So you can see that when the machine is on, powered on, I get uh, a voltmeter. Now I know some of the 900 Rangers have a voltmeter I think in the gauge pod. These earlier ones don't. So this is a good thing to have especially with all the stuff that I've added to it. It's, it's good to know uh, your volts in case something's going wrong. Uh, this is a, a very easy install guys. I just had to open up the hole a little bit bigger. I just used a file so it's not that much uh, bigger at all. It just screws on uh, with a big nut on the back side and then I just plugged in the, the, the wires in the back. I think one wire I had to increase the spade size because it was a little smaller but they have a positive and a negative back there already for the other power port so all you gotta do is plug it in after you uh, get your get a, a bigger spade they had a small spade on one of them for some reason but um, I did have to switch them around I forgot which one was ground which one was power it'll only work one way so keep that in mind anyway that brings it up to um, the, the repair part of this video and uh, watching my voltmeter, I noticed that this thing charges at like four and a half to 4.7 volts most of the time. Even when I got my lights on and heater going and stuff, it's around 14.5 uh, volts. But after the machine runs for a while, I lose my charge. So basically it goes to 12 volts. If I'm just uh, driving around and then if I turn anything on, you can see it go go under 12 volts. So um, I believe the gauge will warn you when you get to like 10 volts. It'll say a low voltage or something like that. I didn't know that until it started happening. But I noticed it way before the gauge told me on my uh, little voltmeter here. So... I knew I had a problem before the machine let me know I had a problem, but uh, I, I think the, the voltage regulator is, is going bad on this thing. Uh, I think that's a fairly common thing uh, with these Rangers. Uh, they, uh, they like to overheat. Those things get really hot. Uh, I've noticed it with the older Rangers. I, did, I thought they had the problem kind of fixed on these newer Rangers, but apparently they don't. I didn't have any trouble with my 16, but maybe this was... Uh, little early in the production or something maybe they didn't have it quite figured out but I got a voltage regulator and I'll show you that alrighty guys this here is the voltage regulator for these Ranger 900s it's uh, quite a bit better looking than the older Rangers uh, uh, that I had like I said I thought they had it all figured out for these not to overheat but apparently this one has 
an upgrade that's supposed to help stop the overheating issue. Uh, these get really warm. I know on the older ranges they get really warm, the voltage regulator. That's why they got these fins and why this is uh, aluminum, I believe. It's trying to dissipate the heat that's created uh, and, and the voltage regulator here. So that's why they fail. They get hot and the, I'm sure there's a circuit board in there and when things get hot, uh, the solder joints and stuff fail and, and other parts fail. So heat is kind of the enemy. It's got a really long wire here for some reason. I'm not sure why. Uh, this might be or might be for a, a, a Razor or something. It said it fit a Ranger, so hopefully it fits the Ranger. Uh, you got uh, plugs here that plug in. So really, you got to unbolt it. There's two bolts that hold it on. You unbolt it, unplug it, and should be able to swap it out that easy. But we'll see here. Um, Actually, I know this is way too long, but I don't know. We'll wrap her around. We'll tie it up. Um, if it works, it works. Um, I'll be happy. I think 60 some bucks. They had more expensive ones, um, but uh, we'll see how this one works. Hopefully, this one works. I'll, I'll have links, guys, for the, the charging port and this um, in the description in the comment section, so you can guys go check these out, but Anyway, let's uh, get to the install, I guess, of this uh, voltage regulator. Okay, so some of you might be asking, where's the voltage regulator? Because I've never seen that. It's not under the seat. It's not uh, anywhere in the cab. Well, the voltage regulator is... Oh, ah, see here. You see the plug-ins right there. You can see the yellow wires. It is in the grill, actually kind of off to the side in front of the radiator. So I'm thinking I'm gonna to have to remove the bumper to be able to get to this thing, uh, to make it easy to get to it anyway. But uh, the bumpers ain't too bad to, uh, to pull off. This one's a little harder than the stock one. The stock one comes off easier than this Extreme bumper. But the Extreme bumper has a few more mounting points, but Anyway, I'm going to probably get to pulling that off and then uh, we'll get you a better look at this regulator. Okay guys, so I was able to get this thing out. I, I just raised this piece up. Um, you got to unbolt a, a few, few brackets, a bracket like this on each side. And this kind of folds up here and I was able to get it out. Uh, from there, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it in from this way because it was really tight. And if you have really big arms and really big hands, you might not be able to do that. I had to unplug it. I stuck one hand in here to hold one side of the plug and then I stuck another hand uh, down in here to be able to get this thing unplugged. We'll go over the bench and I'll show you what it, the old one looks like. Okay, so here's the old one. And it actually had this aluminum plate on the back side of it like that and this side is like sticky I don't know what the deal is there it's got different kind of kind of weird colors on it uh, I think the failure this is why it failed right here you can see it's separated from the plug and I'm guessing water's probably gotten down in there and it's probably wrecked this thing I don't know. I don't know if I should use this on the new one or not. This one doesn't have a sticky back to it. It is um, definitely not sticky. It don't really even feel soft. It feels much harder than that one. But um, I don't know. I may or may not you reuse this. Probably should use it, I guess. But um, the part number on this thing, here's the original part number. I didn't have this when I ordered mine, but I'll give it to you guys, I guess. There's your part number, I believe, the top one. So you can look it up. Uh, you can see that the cord on this one is a lot shorter than this one. This one might be more of like a universal one where it's got a lot more cord 
because it might fit uh, like I said I think it fits the razor too for some reason the razor cord is longer but um, everything else looks the same the plugins look the same so um, we should be good on that everything the spades look the same so I gotta see how I can get this one installed maybe I can get it installed through there I don't think so but um, yeah, I didn't take my bumper off because once you take the bumper off, everything is behind this plastic anyway. So I didn't see like where you'd have a lot of access to it. And then taking that front plastic piece off that is kind of a major ordeal. Um, getting it out ain't so bad, but trying to get it back under those fenders, those front fenders is not, it's not a one person job. But um, I'll see here, let me figure it out and I'll see if I can't get it back installed. Okay guys, so I was able to get it back in uh, from the top side of the radiator. Like I said, if you have really big hands or really big arms, uh, you're probably gonna have to take off your, your front bumper and possibly even that front plastic piece or, or do some trimming or something to get it out. But I was able to go from the top side I don't have huge arms and hands. Um, I did curl up the extra and I had a lot of extra length. I'm not sure why, but I just zip tied that in front of the front diff. So it should, should be no big deal. Um, just make sure that I don't get caught on something if you do have the big long one like I got. But I gotta go out now and give her a test. Hopefully uh, she's fixed. And I'll be back uh, with the results, I guess. Okay, guys, so it appears I have uh, fixed the issue uh, that I had before where it would just uh, stop charging completely. Uh, except for I have uh, what seems like a new issue here. Um, at idle, I'm going below 12 volts. Uh, if I give it just a tiny bit of RPM, I mean, it shoots all the way up to almost 14 volts there. And um, I don't really understand why it would be going below 12 volts with the machine running. That doesn't make any sense to me. I think I got everything turned off. Well, I got my fan on, on speed number one right now. And I'm 11.5. If I shut that off, I think it goes to 11.7 or 8. And I think I've got everything shut off uh, that I can shut off on here. So I don't know what the, what the deal is. I, I, say I uh, solved one issue and I got, it seems like a different kind of an issue. I don't really like that because um, in the winter time I like to warm this thing up uh, and I like to leave it idle with the first speed on on the heater. And if it's not going to charge, if it's going to take my battery out, see it's 11.5 volts uh, at idle with my uh, heater speed, or heater fan on the first speed. Okay guys, so after running it a few more days, uh, I have noticed that if I shut everything off, it will stay at like 12 volts. But I still think that it should be charging um, at idle so I really don't know what's going on with, with that but I probably should do a full-size battery uh, upgrade on this that's what I did with my 16 that I had and I don't remember having any problems with that so that's probably what I'll do but anyway guys hopefully uh, this will help some of you guys out uh, and uh, I guess guys I'll see you